Hi guys, I'm going to talk about glazing today. So if you are hybrid and you are glazing, this is review for you or an introduction if you missed um, class when I introduced this. And for you um, remote kiddos, if you ever want to come and get supplies or glaze your pieces, this is how you do it. And also for those of you taking ceramics too, which I really encourage you to do, it, um, it gives you direction on that. So this is digitally on our website. I just printed it for our classroom. It's on Schoology's homepage, not our website, but Schoology homepage. And this, these are the glazes I currently have. Um, if we run out, we run out, but I have these in stock and there's three pages of them. I also have under glazes too, which I'll talk about in a minute. But basically you would either look here or online, or you would go and look at the test tiles that are on um, the shelf in the glaze room. That's the best thing to look at. Or some of the jars have the color on them. Okay, the under glazes, they have a green label and they say under glaze. They are very different. This can go on greenware or bisqueware, um, but it's not food safe or shiny until you put three coats of clear on it. Um, and, but it stays true to the color in the jar. There's two ounce jars and pint jars. This is the two ounce jar. Glazes are usually different colored in the jar, so don't be startled by that. And they need three coats. All of our glazes are food safe, but they need three coats to be food safe um, and make them glossy. Our glazes are mostly gloss glazes. Some of the glazes don't have pictures on them. So for example, this one doesn't, the clear. So if it doesn't have a picture on it, you might need to look at the test tile. Um, this one, doesn't look clear in the jar, but the reason it looks like that is because it has clay in it. So remember, glazes change in the firing because our firing temperature is cone 6 or 2200 degrees, and that's really hot. Also, it's very important to remember that we only glaze bisqueware, so that means fired clay. Okay, you don't glaze greenware. You can underglaze greenware, but you don't glaze bisqueware. Okay, so the first thing you would do um, when you go to glaze your pieces and go in the glaze room to pick out your glazes is you would pick up a glaze record. So the glaze record has directions and this is how, where you keep track of your glazing and your glazing process. So for those of you remote, you'd pick one of these up to take home with you with your glazes if you choose to glaze your pieces. So then after you pick this up, you'll pick out your glazes. So your glazes, you could do different colors. You can do one color for the whole thing. Um, you can do one color inside if it's a vessel or another color outside. You could do stripes. Remember glazes can melt together though. So trying to paint patterns or designs, that's better to use under glaze for. But overall color, we use glaze. And the most important thing about glaze is that you don't glaze the bottom. So any part that sticks to the kiln shelf, we wouldn't glaze. So I could glaze this raised part but I would not glaze the bottom. If you glaze the bottom of your piece, it'll melt and stick to the kiln shelf and I have to chisel it off and it might break. So once our clay is fired to the high temperature, even without um, glaze on it, it's this cream color, okay? So this is vitrified waterproof clay. The bisqueware is at cone 06 temperature, which is 1800 degrees about, whereas glazeware is fired to cone six, not 06 and that's about 2200 and that's where the glazes melt. Also notice how the glazes usually melt into any uh, carving that you have on your pieces. All right, when you go into the glaze room to pick out your color, you want to take the jar of glaze off the shelf by the side, never the lid, because sometimes people don't put the lids on correctly and it could spill on you. Then you put your finger on top and shake it and when you open it, it should be the consistency of melted ice cream. If not, give it to me and I will saturate it. If it's totally dry, we have to toss it. Then what you'll do is you will get a little cup with a lid and there's Sharpies. Make sure you put hand sanitizer on before you touch anything. And you would just fill that cup. Now for a big vase like this, you might need one full, full cup, or maybe even two, especially if you're doing it all one color, inside and outside. Um, so it just depends on how big your piece is. For something little like this, you do have to do three coats, but you would only need to fill it up about um, halfway or maybe even a quarter of the way. So you would fill it up, 
and put in here. I'm not going to fill this because I don't want it to dry out. Then you guys all got paintbrushes from me. This one's green handled, but yours is black handled that you have at home. If you come to pick up glazes, you can ask for one. I have a few extra. If you um, are glazing at school, I have some for you to use and then we'll wash them and put them in the bleach water. Okay, so like I said, you can do them all one color or you can change it up. One of the other things you can do is layer glazes. So for layering glazes, you can go to the website, Amico website, and look up layering glazes. There's Amico, A-M-A-C-O. It's Potter's Choice Cone 5 to 6 glazes. Remember, that's 2200 degrees. I don't have all these colors, but if I do have two of those colors and you want to layer, you would look at the bottom color and do two coats of the bottom color and two coats of the top. So yes, it is more than the three coats recommended to make it food safe and shiny, but it is okay for layering to do two and two. And so you do the bottom coat first and then the top coat, so two and two. Then you might get it somewhat like this, okay? It just depends on how much texture and how much you layer and that kind of thing. But it is kind of fun to experiment and try, especially on something like your vase or your heart art. Then you would apply three coats of glaze onto your work. If you do get some glaze on the bottom, you have to wipe it off. So you get your sponge damp and squeeze out the extra water and then simply just wipe it off from the bottom and the sides and then you can wash your sponge and use that. If you have a dish or something that has feet, you can glaze the bottom of it. You just wouldn't glaze the feet. So these would have to be wiped off a little bit too. Now with the blue rutile or glazes with iron, it will stain it, but you still can wipe off most of the glaze and then that is not enough to make it stick. So remember that when you're glazing, you would do three coats, not glaze the bottom. So the glaze record is where you record it. So the date is so you remember when you did it. This one is blue rutile. Now the reason I wrote one coat is, let's say I didn't have time to finish it in class or I was busy at home and had to clean up. You have to do three coats. So you can do this in, in pencil and that will remind you. Description of the piece is what you're making. And then after it's glaze fired, you would write on your piece your opinion or results of it. It's also a good idea to take a picture of it for yourself. So what I usually do is I take a picture of the glaze record with my piece. And then I always know what I did for glazing. So those are the basics of glazing.